Hello there you guys, welcome to another one of my live videos and uh, big big breaking news um, is coming out of the media saying that this is coming out from the Daily Mail saying that Manchester United have reportedly agreed a £15 million deal with Swansea for Daniel uh, James and looking at it, ultimately he's going to be um, our first signing uh, for this summer um, is Daniel James, I believe uh, that also the terms um, have also uh, been um, agreed obviously you know, when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, towards the back end of the season you know, was asked um, about you know, the speculation of Daniel James you know, linked with a move to Old Trafford, he refused to you know, blatantly you know, comment um, on it but it's looking Likely, you know, Daniel James is going to be uh, coming out uh, to Manchester United. Reportedly, Manchester United have agreed a £15 million deal with Swansea for Daniel James. And obviously, you know, uh, the stories uh, broke out about this um, earlier on um, in the month, saying that Manchester United, you know, were close to agreeing around a £15 million deal for him. But I do believe, you know, to be quite honest, that Daniel James um, is a surprise uh, solution, of course. Um, he's a surprise solution. He's a low expectation. Um, he's um, a cheap um, acquisition. Um, he's Daniel James. Um, as I did say, it's not always about, you know, getting the Galactico players. It's not always about spending a big amount. Um, players because it doesn't always get you it doesn't always you know get you in that commanding position where you currently want to be and it doesn't always guarantee you um success and Daniel James um of course you know he's primarily um a winner um he's primarily um a winner is Daniel James he can play as an attacking midfielder but he's primarily a winner and I think you see that he's supposed to be more effective from that left hand side you can rotate him on the right but he's supposed to be you know more effective from that left hand side um is Daniel James um throughout the course um, of this season Daniel James um has been a uh, very very impressive though with Swansea I think he's played um over over a uh, over like uh, 30 um, odd games obviously he's only got um, a year left um, on his deal uh, with Swansea but there has been quite a, there has been a number of clubs uh, that have attracted uh, their interest um, in Daniel James um, obviously you know, Everton have been interesting obviously you know, Leeds have been uh, interesting obviously you know, Leeds were on the brink um, of getting uh, Daniel James um, of course uh, back in uh, January but he is um, a surprise uh, solution but the question is has he got the capabilities has he got the, the attribution you know, to come and uh, succeed um, in the Premier League and can he exceed um, expectation levels but looking at it from a financial point of view he's, um, he is um, a very very uh, cheap um, alternative um, is Daniel James and um, as I did currently say there is quite a few players um, out there uh, for reasonable figures so you know there is a lot of people saying you know maybe we should be sensible over our recruitment this summer because maybe we could end up getting around two or three players for £100 million maybe just um, over um, £100 million so it's looking likely now uh, Daniel James is currently um, our first signing uh, for this summer it hasn't been fully finalised um, as yet uh, but yeah we have agreed uh, the £15 million deal uh, reportedly and the terms um, have also uh, been um, agreed but only 21 years um, of age has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him and um, he's a Welsh um, international but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has made it clear he's worked out our transfer strategy for this summer and he did say he wants to bring a number of young players you know, that can come in you know, that can grow, develop um, and emulate um, into superstars because obviously we're looking to bring a number of young players in because we have got a lot of um, age not players um, in our squad but I, do, I don't know if Daniel James you know, will be uh, the right candidate but uh, time will currently um, tell but he can score goals he can provide uh, can Daniel James so this is uh, absolutely uh, very very um, good news but obviously as we all know Man United are looking to bring um, at least five new um, additions uh, to the club uh, this summer because I, I do believe uh, we need um, at least uh, five new players so looking like now Daniel James um, is on the board uh, not yet but I think he will be soon and uh, obviously now uh, we need um, at least uh, another uh, four players um, of course and we are expected to orchestrate um, a big summer clear out I think we need to get rid of at least uh, five players um, obviously all the players that we do want to leave you know we're not going to be able to you know resolve uh, this problem um, in one window it's going to take a, co a couple of windows uh, to currently um, address uh, that problem but Solskjaer anyway is getting to uh, two hundred and fifty million pounds spending spree, obviously. That's what we're currently uh, gonna get to spend. And obviously it's gonna be a lot more than that, you know, if we can cash in for the likes of Popper, if we can cash in for the likes of Lukaku, that's gonna help us with our rebuilding process and it will help us um, of course uh, with our uh, transition. Obviously we know the club are still looking to hire a director of footballing because I do believe we need a structural change um, at the club. Um obviously there has been quite um, a few candidate names mentioned. The recent name that got mentioned the other week obviously you know uh, was uh, Darren Fletcher but it would be ideal to recommend someone in you know who knows about the club you know someone who of course was had the the current um, experience but yeah I'm still back in Oligan and Solskjaer this summer um, I do believe it's going to be hard for us to attract players to the elite level because we're not in Champions League football for next season but Solskjaer still believes we can attract uh, players uh, to the elite level even though we're not in a uh, Champions League he did say towards the back end of the season that he'd uh, been contacted by a number of agents you know saying that their players you know do, uh, would want to uh, come to uh, Man do want to uh, come to Manchester United but Solskjaer is not intending on bringing um, any short term uh, players uh, to the club but he can identify the areas you know where Manchester United um, are lacking and you know we do need a right back you know we do need a central defender perhaps we need two central defenders you know we need new additions in that midfield you know we definitely need um, a right winner I do I should say and I think we currently I need um, a striker of course um, if Lukaku um, is to uh, leave uh, the club so you can see the, def the deficiencies in the squad and we need to address uh, this problem um, in this uh, summer uh, transfer window and obviously there's still some contract uh, renewals uh, to sort out you know we've got to um, sort that out as well obviously you know Rashford is coming to an end um, of his deal soon he's only got a year left on his deal as Rashford we have not yet come to an agreement to get him a new contract obviously the 
Gehae is in there, the final year of his contract, you know, over Ander Herrera, you know, go um, on a free transfer. So there's lots to sort out, uh, you know, uh, with Manchester United, um, of course. But I'm back in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at the moment. Let's, let's not forget, you know, I'm on this squad is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, he's still in the process um, of rebuilding. He's still in the process um, of rebuilding because he's inheriting 11 of Jose Mourinho's players. You know, there's players here from Van Gaal he's inheriting. You know, he's, you know, there's still Matt here from the David Moyes era. There's four or five players here from the Alex Ferguson era. So he's, he's inheriting um, all them players. So none this squad is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I know he, he watched some of this team at this, you know, at this day and age, you know, uh, grow um, and develop, you know, when he was managing the Manchester United reserve team. But none of this squad um, is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's. And I know he hasn't got a great manager with pedigree, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but I'm still backing him. But if this bad vein of form continues going on into next season, then I will be critical of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Then I will want him out uh, of Manchester United. But I do believe it's going to take at least three or four years, at least, should I say, you know, to mount um, any kind of a title challenge up. And I do believe at least in the next two to three years, you know, our aspirations um, is going to be fighting uh, for that top four. And that, that's what it will be uh, like uh, next season, of course. And um, yeah, so yeah, look, good news is that it's looking like, you know, Daniel James is currently uh, going to be coming in. So hopefully he can deliver us them goals uh, that we need. And hopefully he can be a standout player for us because he is a surprise package. He is um, a cheap um, alternative, um, is Daniel James. But obviously we're going to put him on that uh, left-hand side, you know, Daniel James, because obviously that's where he's most effective. And now people will say what's going to be happening with Anthony Martial. Well, I think we'll rotate Martial um, in more of a central position now uh, with supposedly, you know, Daniel James uh, coming in. Uh, but there has been a lot of talks about Anthony Martial. As you all know, reflecting back the other week, there was a lot of talks saying that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, wanted to sell um, Anthony and Martial. Uh, obviously, Solskjaer was reflecting on Anthony Martial's, uh, Anthony Martial's bad attitude in training, obviously his overall uh, behaviour. And obviously, Martial's performances have been way below par um, in the last uh, couple of months uh, for Manchester United. But I'm still backing... Um, I'm still backing Anthony Martial, you know, I still believe he's the long-term uh, solution uh, for Manchester United, you know, he's been at Manchester United four years, obviously Man United gave him a new five-year contract uh, back in uh, January, but we have seen glimpses of his glimpses of his, uh, of his uh, best form, you know, we saw it earlier on in the season, I know in the last couple of months he's failed to replicate that, you know, we saw it in Anthony Martial's uh, first season, um, in his debut season uh, for the club, obviously we got him in a deal with £36 million for Monaco, rising up to 57 or £58 million based um, on goals um, and achievements, uh, so um, yeah, I still believe um, he's the long-term uh, solution uh, for Manchester United, you know, only 23 years of age, has still got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. But obviously, you know, hasn't graduated uh, to that level yet, Martial. It could take him at least a couple of years to get him to that level where he uh, currently uh, wants to be, you know, uh, Anthony and Martial. But obviously, as we all know, you know, Solskjaer said he wanted to sell him. And then obviously, you know, the, gla the Glazers um, had overruled um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's decision, you know, to sell Anthony Martial. And obviously, you know, Joe Glazer had stepped in and Joe Glazer believes he's the right, still the right solution for Man United. Joe Glazer is a big um, fan um, of Anthony and Martial. And if, I think he viewed him. Um, as a club's uh, Pele, you know, uh, Anthony and Martial. Obviously, there was speculation of Martial leaving last year, you know, under the Jose Mourinho era, because obviously, you know, Jose Mourinho had bad disputes with, you know, the players, some of the players here, obviously had bad disputes uh, with the board, and um, obviously he had bad disputes uh, with Anthony Martial, and this is the main factor reason why, uh, you know, Mourinho wanted to sell Anthony Martial, but obviously, you know, um, Ed Woodward um, had stopped, uh, you know, this uh, from currently, uh, currently uh, materialising, so obviously, you know, Anthony Martial, you know, still uh, remains here, but yeah, still uh, the uh, right uh, solution uh, for Manchester. Manchester United, um, of course, but let's be honest, you know, the majority of this squad uh, does uh, need um, a reality check um, at the moment, you know, because their performances um, have just, you know, been not clearly um, acceptable, of course. You know, we've seen it with Marcus Rashford, um, obviously his performances have been way below par in the last couple of months, and okay, he has sustained quite a few injuries, and that might have taken its toll on him, might have had a bad effect um, on his game. Marcus Rashford, you can put him on the left, but he's more effective uh, in, in more of a central position, um, is Marcus Rashford, and obviously being in high places like the, what, age of seven, age of eight, uh, progressing up the ranks with us, fantastic, the welfare number of years, being in the senior squad of us since 2016, and we know that Rashford can be capable of when he's playing to his potential best, he can get them runs in behind, he can be like lightning, he can score them goals of course, and um, yeah, and I've analysed Rashford's performances overall since Solskjaer's coming in, and, you know, he's been really, really consistent as, uh, you know, Marcus Rashford, and in that, especially, you know, in that three-month, uh, you know, period where Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the um, interim manager, you know, we saw the best of Marcus Rashford, but let's be honest, at least in um, the last uh, couple of months, you know, Marcus Rashford's performances um, have been uh, really, really uh, below uh, par and that's um, very, very um, disappointing, you know, to be um, quite honest with you. Uh, very, very disappointing, but I still believe he's the long-term solution for Manchester United, um, is Marcus Rashford, but obviously, as I said, we haven't come to an agreement to get him um, a new contract yet, but um, obviously, it's still going to take him at least a couple of years, you know, to graduate him uh, to that level, you know, Lingard's performances, he's been so inconsistent um, in the last uh, couple of months uh, for Manchester United, he's been uh, very, very um, inconsistent. 
But obviously, Jesse Lingard's um, obviously got a lot more experience than the likes of Martial and Rashford because obviously, you know, Jesse Lingard um, is uh, 27 uh, years um, of age. But I still believe um, he's a long term uh, solution uh, for Manchester United. So I do believe that Lingard, Martial, uh, Lingard, Rashford, and Martial, you know, that trio, I do believe they are uh, the long term uh, solution uh, for Manchester United. Uh, but as I did currently say, we've got to invest uh, this summer because we do know the likes of City are probably going to try and invest this summer. Liverpool are going to probably try and invest this summer, even though I don't think they need to, but I think they'll still try to, obviously. Um, obviously, you know, Arsenal are going to strengthen up uh, this summer. So, obviously, we've got to get um, at least uh, five uh, new um, additions uh, to the club, of course. And, um, but, um, yeah, and uh, news um, about uh, Ryan Sessignon, um, of course. Now, we do know reports have been coming out um, in the last uh, three or four days um, in regards to Ryan Sessignon saying that uh, reportedly uh, Manchester United um, have made um, initial contact with Fulham um, over the potential move uh, for Ryan Sessignon. And it did initially say uh, Manchester United are the only club that have made any kind of contact um, over the possibility um, of signing um, Ryan Sessignon. Even though he has been on Tottenham's um, agenda for quite a while, it's also said that Juventus um, have expressed their interest um, in Ryan Sessignon. You know, very, very young is Ryan Sessignon. Um, only 19 uh, years um, of age. Obviously, so far, has spent the entirety um, of his career uh, with Fulham as Ryan Sessignon. Obviously, uh, he's had three years worth of experience um, in their senior squad. Um, obviously, had a, he's had a one year, had, has had a one year um, of experience in the Premier League um, under his belt. Obviously, you know, the Championship uh, the season uh, before. But obviously, it's been bluntly made clear that Ryan Sessignon is not intending on spending another season in the Championship with Fulham. Obviously, Fulham are in the Championship next season. Obviously, getting relegated from the Premier League after only spending one season um, in the top flight. Uh, Fulham, of course. But Ryan Sessignon um, has only got um, a year left um, on his deal uh, with Fulham, of course. And, um, you know, I think definitely no, Ryan Sessignon wants to leave. I think Fulham would demand that they want around £40 million pounds, uh, for the player. But, yeah, he's a very, very good player, Ryan Sessignon. You know, he can play as a left back. Um, he can also play as a left winner. I think he's now uh, actually a prime rally, um, a left winner, um, is Ryan Sessignon. But this is why I don't see us getting him in. Because, obviously, as it's just said, we've agreed a £15 million pound deal with Swansea for Daniel James. So, I don't actually know, see Manchester United you know, getting Ryan Sessignon. And I know you can put him to the left back position. But I don't think, I think we're okay on that left hand side and I don't think we need a left back you know we've got Luke Shaw Luke Shaw's very very reliable hasn't done much wrong um, as a Manchester United uh, player and I think he's been very consistent for us and he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him obviously Luke Shaw um, is our uh, first choice uh, left back but talking about Ryan Sessignon I think he probably wants to take um, his career uh, to the next level maybe wants to go to a competitive elite level uh, football club you know that can offer him like Champions League football you know a team that can you know be up there you know winning trophies and challenging for trophies of course and um, yeah so I don't really see him uh, coming uh, to Manchester United of course even though we're, we, we're the only club that's made um, initial contact uh, with Fulham. Uh, Ryan Sessignon has made over 100 odd appearances um, in his senior squad with Fulham. Um, I think he scored like 25 goals in, in 115 um, appearances. Obviously made um, his senior debut at just uh, the age um, of 16 and obviously Ryan Sessignon um, has just uh, just turned uh, 19 years of age. He turned uh, 19 um, on Saturday, uh, did Ryan Sessignon. Actually the first player to be born in the 2000s, you know, to score a goal uh, to score a goal in a first team uh, game. So his statistics um, are absolutely um, incredible, um, Ryan uh, Sessignon's, but I do really, really like him, but from my own perspective opinion, I don't see Manchester United you know, getting um, a deal over the line for him, but we know he's available uh, for a reasonable uh, figure, Ryan Sessignon, but I think he's going to be uh, definitely uh, leaving uh, Fulham. And um, so in regards to uh, Tango uh, Ndombele, we'll give you some news um, in regards to Tango uh, Ndombele. Uh, reportedly, Manchester United um, are reluctant to put any uh, to make any kind of approach or any kind of offer for Tango Ndombele until we clarify uh, the situation with Paul Pogba. So we want to sort the situation out with Paul Pogba before we do currently uh, make a move for uh, Tango uh, Ndombele uh, from Leon because he has been on Manchester United's um, agenda you know, for quite some time now as Tango Ndombele. Obviously, reports were coming out last week, uh, was it, saying that Tottenham you know, were the leading contenders you know, for his signature. Uh, Tottenham have obviously you know, been in negotiations you know, about this um, it has said obviously you know, that Juventus um, have expressed their interest um, in Tango and Dumbele um, only 22 uh, years um, of age obviously Leon got him permanently last summer for around was it 7 or 8 million pounds because initially um, he had uh, one season um, on loan with Leon but obviously you know, Leon made a deal permanent last summer by paying around 7 or 8 million pounds I think he's under contract till 2023 is Tango and Dumbele I think he's primarily a central midfielder I think you can put him as a defensive mid but I think um, he's primarily um, a central uh, midfielder is Tango and Dumbele I think he's initially valued he's not going to come cheap I think he's initially valued at around 87 or 88 million pounds but he's really really good you know he's compassive he breaks up the player very very well he's an, he's an energetic uh, midfielder and I do believe he's blending um, our midfielder very very well but reportedly we are reluctant to make any kind of approach or any offer for him until we sort the situation out uh, with Paul Pogba and talking about uh, you know Paul Pogba of course obviously we know he's heavily linked uh, with a move uh, to Real Madrid and I think for Paul Pogba to make his dream move for Real Madrid, he's, to Real Madrid he's just got to put that transfer request in 
obviously, as we all know, reports were coming out the other week saying that obviously, you know, talks um, are currently stalled, you know, between Paul Pogba and Real Madrid. Um, obviously, you know, based on his uh, 13 million a year wage demands, because obviously his wage demands he was demanded didn't fit the uh, wage structure um, at Real Madrid. And obviously, you know, Real Madrid were not willing to meet um, his 13 uh, million a year uh, wage demands. He did initially say Real Madrid were not willing to match um, his £298,000 a week uh, wages. So it did say Paul Pogba would have to take a pay cut. I think now Paul Pogba is willing to take um, a pay cut, you know, to uh, make um, his move to uh, Real Madrid. And, you know, some United fans will be happy he's leaving. You know, some United fans, you know, won't be um, happy um, he's leaving because he's still one of the best uh, midfielders um, in world football, you know, when he's playing in the right vein, when he's playing um, in, in the right manner. And we mainly saw the best um, of Paul Pogba, you know, in that three month period when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager. And we mainly saw the best of him as well when Ander Herrera, of course, uh, was in that midfield. So that just emphasised uh, how much of an impact Ander Herrera, you know, did make um, in that uh, midfield because, you know, he used to free up the lights um, of Paul Pogba and that's when Pogba expressed himself. He was scoring goals, he was providing, he was feeding players ahead of him really, really well. He was supporting the defence really, really well. And that's when we saw uh, the best um, of Paul Pogba. But at least in the last seven or eight games, Paul Pogba's performances have been very below par. They've been, he's been very inconsistent and that just emphasises that he doesn't no longer wants to be um, at Manchester United. Obviously, Paul Pogba's still got three years uh, left um, on his contract. Obviously, at least in the last couple of weeks, um, his agent, Riley Ola, um, has been in the process um, of finding him um, a new club. Obviously, uh, Paul Pogba was heavily linked to a move away from Old Trafford last year, you know, based on his poor relationship with Jose Mourinho, um, based on his poor relationship with Jose Mourinho. Um, obviously, um, you know, he was linked with his former club, Juventus. He was linked to a move uh, to Barcelona, where uh, was Paul Pogba. And um, obviously, I think there's still been reports coming out saying that Juventus um, are interested in re-signing uh, Paul Pogba, but it did say Juventus may have to offload a couple of their players as part, you know, to you know to be able to fund uh, the move uh, for uh, Paul Pogba. But it's looking like the Real Madrid are going to get a deal over the line. Obviously, he's uh, Zinedine Zidane's uh, main uh, priority uh, target. It initially said that we want around £160 million, Paul Pogba, but I don't think we want to sell him anywhere. But I think if we are willing to do any business, I think we want around £160 million. We're not going to get £160 million for Pogba because obviously, you know, Real Madrid are not willing to pay £160 million uh, for Paul Pogba. But I think, you know, maybe the main factor reason why Paul Pogba wants to leave because maybe he wants to be, you know, challenging, winning trophies, of course, wants to be in Champions League uh, football. And obviously, you know, Man United can't, can't offer him this. So, um, yeah, so this is the, one of the main factor reasons why he wants to leave. Maybe he wants to be playing um, amongst uh, better players uh, than Paul Pogba. So that may be another reason why he wants to leave uh, Manchester United. And I think Man United have been in negotiations with trying to uh, get Paul Pogba um, a new contract. But obviously, you know, um, it hasn't uh, currently uh, materialised. And um, it didn't initially say a while back he wanted around 500 grand a week for Manchester United if he was uh, to sign um, a new contract, Paul Pogba. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer spoke to him a while back saying that uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer spoke to him a while back and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, said he was still convinced that he will remain um, at Manchester United uh, next season. Um, obviously, he's our most expensive player. You know, Man United uh, paid uh, £89 million uh, for Paul Pogba. But if we can get around £120 or £130 million for Paul Pogba, you know, we could get uh, two You know, we could get two, two players there uh, with that uh, money. I know it's going to be hard for us to find a player of Paul Pogba's calibre or level, but, you know, we could still get uh, two players there uh, with that uh, current uh, money. But I do believe he's going to be uh, going out uh, to Real Madrid. You know, Zindin Zidane's a big admirer of the player. Obviously, um, you know, Paul Pogba was talking a hell, of, a hell of a lot about Real Madrid, you know, about a month or so ago, you know, about his dream and a dream, you know, to play for them um, and all that. And Paul Pogba probably wants to take his career now to the next level because he's still 26 years of age. You know, he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him and he's still currently um, in his prime. But he's had a great career. You know, he's had a good career, Paul Pogba, you know, to be quite honest with you. You know, he had a great, you know, he had a great uh, four years um, in cheering uh, with Juventus, did Pogba. Obviously, with us, he's won the Europa League and the League Cup with us. Obviously, that came in Jose Mourinho's uh, first season. But um, he hasn't really exceeded expectation levels at Manchester United as we thought, as, as we thought he would have done, you know, when we got him for £89 million from Juventus uh, back in 2016. But we saw the best of him uh, in that three months um, under Ole Gunnar, uh, in that three months when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, was the interim manager. But he didn't get the chance under Mourinho because he had the bad relationship with Paul Popper um, and Jose uh, Mourinho. So it's looking likely anyway, you know, that Paul Popper um, is going to be uh, leaving uh, the club. But, you know, for me, I think Bruno Fernandes, you know, would be the right replacement uh, for Paul Popper, um, in my opinion, because I think Bruno Fernandes um, is a very, very good midfielder. He's primarily an attacking midfielder, um, as you all know, he's uh, Bruno Fernandes. Um, obviously, he's been, uh, Man United have been interested in, obviously, you know, Manchester City um, have expressed uh, their interest um, in Bruno Fernandes. And uh, Bruno Fernandes, I think he's got all the capabilities, he's got all the attributes to succeed in the Premier League, and I do, he'd take his career to the next level, and I do believe he'd tear it up um, in the Premier League, you know, with Bruno Fernandes. He's been fantastic in his couple of seasons in Portugal, with Sport and Lisbon, you know, 
know, he's full of goals, full of assists. You know, you know, he's just absolutely a fantastic Bruno Fernandes. And I think he'd, you know, address our problems um, in that midfield. As you all know, he's primarily an attacking midfielder. That's why we'd see him as a replacement of Paul Popper. He did say Sporting Lisbon want around £60 million pounds for him. His initial release clause is around 85 or £86 million. Pounds. He's under contract with Sporting Lisbon um, until 2023. Obviously, had a lot of experience of playing in Italy when he was young, you know, with Sam Pandora um, and Undenese, of course. So he's, he's only 24 years of age. He's Bruno Fernandes. You know, he has still uh, got him a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. You know, Man United have been long admirers um, of the player. I think we've been scouting him at least in the past couple of uh, months, you know, based um, on his uh, fantastic uh, performances. Um, it didn't literally say that, you know, City, you know, you know, were set to get a deal um, over the line for him because it came out a couple of weeks about saying that City were in talks with Sporting Lisbon over around um, a £47 million pound deal uh, for Bruno Fernandes. And it did say City were willing to offer one or two of their players as part of the deal. And then it did initially say then City had allegedly had, uh, opted him out of the race. And then at that point, it gave Man United the advantage, you know, to capitalise, you know, to go in uh, for Bruno uh, Fernandes. But I think it'd be the right solution uh, for Manchester United, um, if I'm going to be uh, quite honest with you. So, yeah, do really, really like him um, indeed and still uh, got him um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. And, um, you know, talking about Joel Felix from Benfica, and he's also another player I'd love at Manchester United. And I don't, are Manchester United in for him? And that is uh, the question. But according to reports, you know, quite a few day, days ago, as I did uh, give you my initial update on it, did say now we've, uh, we've uh, stepped our interest up um, in Joel uh, Felix. It did say Man United have begun negotiations. Um, it did say Man United are, are preparing to put in around £100 million pounds, uh, for Joe uh, Felix because that's um, his initial uh, buyout clause in his deal uh, with Benfica. But Joe Felix um, is only uh, 19 years of age. Again, full of goals, full of assists, got immense talent. I do believe he can um, you know, you know, know, become one of the best players um, in the world. I don't think he can emulate into like a Ronaldo or a Messi or a Neymar uh, and all that, but I still believe he can, he, he can become uh, one of the best um, in the world. I think it, it would uh, take his career uh, to the next level you know, if he was to uh, come to the Premier League, you know, uh, Joe uh, Felix. But there has been a number of clubs uh, that have attracted uh, their interest um, in Joe uh, Felix, uh, but yeah, 19 years of age has still uh, got him a lot of uh, years ahead of him. Obviously, hasn't made um, his senior debut yet for Portugal. I think this has only been his first season um, in the senior squad uh, with Benfica, so he's been uh, fantastic. And um, yeah. So there has been um, a lot of talks about him going on. It did say Man United, you know, I've been scouting for months now, you know, obviously, yet again, Man United instructed scouts um, at the weekend, you know, to keep um, a close eye out um, on the player. But like I said, there's quite a few teams in for him. He's primarily an attacking midfielder. Um, he can play as a winner. He can also play as a striker. So Joel Felix um, is very, very um, versatile. But are we in for Joel Felix? And that is a question. But according to the press, you know, we've begun negotiations. We've stepped our interest up um, in the player. And again, I do believe it'd be the right solution for Manchester United. I don't believe we'd get both players in. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think we'll get Bruno Fernandes or Joe. I don't think we'll get Bruno Fernandes and Joel Felix. We may get one of them in, but I don't see us getting both of them in. And reportedly it cost around £150 million, pounds, you know, to get the pursuit of Bruno Fernandes um, and Joe uh, Felix. But they're both great players. You know, Joel Felix is uh, obviously you know 19, you know, Bruno Fernandes is 24. Bruno Fernandes is obviously you know, more, uh, obviously highly experienced because obviously you know Bruno Fernandes is obviously five years older than Joe uh, Felix. But I do like uh, both players um, indeed. I'd love them to uh, come, you know, come to uh, Manchester United. And um, talking about uh, Jadon Sancho, I know a lot of United fans, you know, want uh, Jadon Sancho uh, to come in, but obviously I don't think we're going to get a deal um, over the line now uh, for Jadon Sancho. Uh, the main factor reason why I think we are missing out on Jadon Sancho this summer because obviously we failed to get in Champions League uh, into the Champions League uh, for next season. A, mate, a player of Jadon Sancho's calibre, you know, wants to be in Champions League football, and he's been fantastic in his couple of years, you know, with, J J uh, with uh, Bushy Dortmund. He is the limelight, he's Jadon Sancho. And if he get, if he did make a return back to the Premier League, I think it would help him, you know, with his developing process process I think it would you know create him a better platform for Jadon Sancho and it did initially say Man United were willing to pay his £100 million pound valuation because we've got the financial power you know to currently uh, meet uh, Jadon Sancho's uh, valuation uh, but I, I think Jadon Sancho has made it clear um, he's intending on spending at least another season with Bruce Hugh Dortmund um, and I think Bruce Hugh Dortmund themselves are very very convinced that Jadon Sancho you know will be uh, staying um, uh, at Bruce Hugh Dortmund but he has got a contract with Bruce Hugh Dortmund um, until 2022 um, as Jadon Sancho only 19 years of age you know one of um, England's uh, youngest um, upcoming uh, players, but he has been he had been, he has been uh, the club's number he had been sorry uh, the club's number one priority target you know uh, for a very very um, long time. But obviously now our move looks um, in serious jeopardy this summer for Jaden Sancho. Obviously now we know the club we have uh, now identified Colour Bal um, as our number one uh, priority target because obviously it's obviously clear that we do uh, need um, a central defender. You know we need someone that can go um, alongside Victor Lindelof um, in our backline. He has been a number of central defenders um, on our agenda. 
So talking about Koulibaly, as you all know, yesterday reports were coming out uh, from the Italian press saying that Manchester United um, had the £95 million bid turned down by Napoli, you know, for Koulibaly. Um, obviously, he's been on Manchester United's agenda uh, for quite some time now, and I do believe um, he'd address um, our defensive deficiencies, you know, fantastically well. I do believe he'd be a great leader um, in our back line. I do believe he's got all the capabilities, all the attributes, you know, to um, succeed um, in the Premier League um, as Koulibaly. But, you know, reflecting back, was it last year, Manchester United, you know, winning negotiations with Napoli over him. Uh, Man United had three bids turned down for him last year. I think United £5 million bid also was turned down uh, last year but obviously we're heavily linked to him um, under Jose Mourinho um, but obviously you know looking back uh, last summer the board weren't back in the signings you know that Jose Mourinho wanted to recommend to come in um, obviously you know our, cent uh, our priority of course was to get a centre back uh, last summer but the board weren't back in you know the signings as I just said that Jose Mourinho wanted to get in there uh, to the club so, Colour Barley, I'd love Colour Barley you know, to come to Manchester United. I think the only way, probably, you know, Napoli would uh, do any business with him if Man United were willing to put a bid in of around 120 or £130 million pounds for Colour Barley. Um, I don't think Man United would be willing to pay that much uh, for, you know, a central uh, defender, of course. Uh, but this is why I said Man United will probably put could go in with a bit of around 80 or 90 million pounds, you know, to try and convince Napoli to sell him for that. But it's obviously been bluntly made clear they're not willing to sell him for around 90 odd million pounds because we've had a 95 million pound bid uh, turned down for him. And obviously, you know, recently Carlo Ancelotti has regarded him as one of the best centre back term in the world, and he is one of the best uh, centre back term in the world, um, is Kulu Barley. Um, obviously, being at Napoli five seasons, made over 200 appearances um, in all competitions, has got a contract with them um, until 2023. Um, as you know, where uh, Kulu uh, Barley recently has uh, signed uh, this new deal, I think his initial release cause him. Um, is around um, £110 million. Pounds. But yeah, I do uh, really, really like him. I do believe if he came to the Premier League, he will produce and deliver the same element of the performances You know that, has been, that he has been doing in his number of years uh, with Napoli. But he's highly experienced. He's 27. He's nearly 28 uh, years um, of age. You know, he's good in the air. His stability is very, very good. Um, holds his line fantastically well. He's aggressive in his play. And he's got everything in um, his colour ball. And we do know... He'd be a fantastic leader um, in our back line, you know, with a uh, colour ball. So he is the club's number one priority target. It's obviously been bluntly made clear that we've obviously you know, got to break the world transfer record you know, to uh, get him a deal um, over the line uh, for the Senegal um, International. But yeah, he has been on Manchester United's um, agenda for quite some time because we haven't had a world-class central defender you know, since we had the likes of Vidic, since we had the likes um, of Ferdinand. And um, yeah, so there's problems defensively. And Smalling and Jones, you know, it was a bad mistake for Manchester United, you know, giving them new long term contracts. Um, obviously, you know, talking about uh, Chris Smalling um, and Phil Jones, I, th I think they should leave the club in the summer. I don't think they will be leaving uh, Smalling and Jones. I think they definitely will be here next season. Um, obviously comparing them both I think Small is a much much better defender than Phil Jones but um, as I said you know they've been long serving players at the club Small has been here nine seasons Jones has been here eight seasons of course and um, yeah so I think they need to go but obviously you know they're not gonna um, in regards to Eric Bay uh, talking about Eric Bay I think he could be on his way out um, obviously his career has been badly affected you know with his fallout under managers and you know his injuries um, he has currently um, sustained so it has taken um, rather, a bad effect um, on Eric Bay's uh, career uh, with Manchester United I think we are looking to recruit the initial 30 million pounds were paid for him from Villarreal uh, three years ago of course uh, if we are willing to do um, any business uh, for Eric Bay but he's, in, he's become injury prone now and I think probably you know we do currently uh, need to get rid of him and he has um, initially uh, lost um, his players um, in the team um, Ra Marcus Rojo do believe he's going to be going which is good news so we can potentially you know cash in there for Marcus Rojo um, Obviously, you know, talking about Damien and Rojo, you know, we could get around £30 million, you know, for Matteo, Damien um, and Rojo. So that, of course, um, is going to help us out with our rebuilding uh, process. And um, talking about, you know, central defenders, as you all know, um, as he updated you, I think, uh, uh, early on, early, early hours um, in the morning, um, in regards to uh, Harry Maguire, um, of course, uh, from Leicester City. Obviously, you know, he's been on a uh, Manchester United um, agenda um, as Harry Maguire. Um, obviously, talking about uh, Harry Maguire, has now said that Manchester City have identified him um, as their number one target, you know, to uh, replace uh, uh, Vincent Company. Because obviously, as you all know, Vincent Company has left Manchester City after serving 11 uh, years there with Man City. Uh, Vincent uh, Company is now player, uh, is the Anderlecht like player manager. And obviously, Obviously now City uh, are in the market, you know, trying to find um, a replacement uh, for their Vincent company. So they've identified Leicester's Harry Maguire. Um, obviously City got Raheed Maris from Leicester uh, last summer uh, for their sixty uh, million pounds. Of course, uh, was it around sixty eight million pounds? I think the most expensive um, African footballer. Uh, but yeah, uh, they got a uh, Raheed Maris um, of course in Man City. So now they're after another Leicester player and they want um, Harry Maguire uh, reportedly. So uh, talking about uh, it did say initially that City may have to break the world. They may have to pay a world record fee um, if they want to get Harry Maguire on the board. Uh, 
of around 70 odd million pounds. Harry Maguire is not worth 70 odd million pounds, in my opinion, but that's what he's previously been valued at uh, by Leicester. Um, I do really, really like him. You know, he's Premier League proven, of course. He's highly experienced. He's 26 years of age. He's in his prime. You know, he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him um, as Harry Maguire. So I still uh, really, really um, like him. Obviously, he's been linked to Manchester United for a while. Obviously, you know, we were linked to him uh, last summer. Obviously, he signed a new long term contract with Leicester last summer. So he's on the contract uh, with Leicester um, until 2023. Um, he's Harry Maguire. Uh, Leicester only paid around £17 million pounds for him uh, from Hull City. But obviously, the likes of us and City have got the financial power to meet his valuation. Obviously, we've got the financial power to currently uh, double um, Harry Maguire's uh, wages. And uh, maybe Harry Maguire wants to maybe take his career to the next level. Maybe he wants to go to a team that can offer him Champions League football, a team that can win trophies. And obviously, the prime example is Manchester City. And obviously, uh, the much attractive option for Harry Maguire, you know, would be a Manchester City, um, of course. But I don't think Leicester want to let Harry Maguire go either way because I think Leicester know how much um, of a central uh, player um, he is. But now City have identified him as their number one target, you know, to currently have a player at Vincent uh, Company. And um, yeah. And um, yeah, so there has been um, a lot of talks about that going on, but he has been on Manchester United's agenda. And I love Harry Maguire and Colour Barley um, in our back line because obviously quite a few Man United fans have said, you know, we need, um, you know, we need two uh, central defenders, of course. But um, yeah. And um, talking about, you know, Alderweireld, I don't think the club are intending on bringing Alderweireld in because obviously Solskjaer doesn't want to bring any short-term players in. You know, looking at it from a financial point of view, you know, he is available for the, uh, you know, he is available um, on the cheap. Um, as you know, uh, Toby Alderweireld, um, he's a cheap alternative because, you know, he's, his release cost is £25 million. Pounds. He's a much cheaper alternative to the likes of the Harry Maguire's and the, you know, the, you know, the, the lits and you know the colour balance and all that you know looking at it that way but he's obviously nowhere near him on the same level so I don't see us you know getting a, getting a toy out the rear held in um, and he's obviously aged up now he's 30 years of age you know has lost that yard of pace has had a number of years uh, in the Premier League um, under his belt so he does know where the Premier League but some United fans are still saying you know, he would be um, a good um, upgrade um, in our defence um, but yeah a lot of central defence have been on our agenda obviously you know we've been interested um, in Ajax's um, delay you know there has been um, a lot of talks about him but obviously according to reports yesterday um, I think he's made his admission that he's set to be uh, making uh, the move uh, to Barcelona and um, he's delayed um, obviously as, as it initially said that he's moved to Barcelona um, and had allegedly uh, stalled but now um, I think he's made his ad admission he's uh, delayed he's in intending on making uh, the move uh, to Barcelona uh, this summer I think he's initially valued at around £65 million and um, he's delayed you know he is definitely you know, uh, the upcoming future you know he's only 19 years of age and um, he's delayed you know Liverpool have attracted him interesting you know we do know Man United have been in there for him and he did initially say that Liverpool have been in negotiations uh, with delayed they have been in negotiations uh, would delay um because this actually you know came from the spanish expert and this is where it was stemming from that liverpool had, had had a talk you know would delay um over a potential summer move uh, from ajax and i think the main factor reason why liverpool would interest him because obviously you know virgil van dyke and that you know knows delete very very well they're both dutch they're both playing the netherlands uh, national team but liverpool looking at looking at them defensively they don't need um, a central defender you know they've got virgil van dyke who they paid 75 million pounds for they're obviously the most expensive uh, defender at the moment and he's addressed their defensive deficiencies very very well obviously Obviously, they've got um, also Joe Matip there. Joe Matip there. They've got Joe Gomez there. So, Liverpool don't need a central defender. So, now, I think they have um, opted him um, out of the race. But, I think now, anyway, De Ligt wants to take his career to the next level, of course. And, I think if he goes to Barcelona, it will take his career to the next level. Um, obviously, so far, De Ligt has spent the entirety of his career um, with Ajax. Obviously, been in their senior squad um, about uh, three years there now. But, he actually became more of a first-teamer when Davinson Sanchez, you know, left Ajax in 2017 uh, for Tottenham. But, De Ligt, um, is a very, very good player. He's very, very young. Holds his line very, very well. Very, very well, very, 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 uh, very tall as well, you know, which is uh, very, very um, beneficial. But De Ligt's obviously, you know, spent the entire team's career with Ajax uh, so far. Obviously, um, he can he can leave Ajax, you know, with his head um, held up high. Obviously, you know, winning the domestic double with them this season, including the Aero Device title for the first time in five years. Um, obviously, you know, progressing them to the Champions League uh, semi final. He has been an integral part um, of their squad um, as De Ligt, but it's looking likely um, he's going to be uh, making uh, the move uh, to Barcelona. But obviously, uh, Edwin van der Sar came out about this, you know, the and CEO of Ajax and he came out and said he, he, he was convinced that he's going to be leaving this summer he's, he's delayed and he says he'll either move to he thinks he'll move to England or Spain but it's looking like he'll be applying his trade um, you know in Spain uh, next season uh, will delay so obviously we've missed out on delay so we won't be uh, getting a delay um, on the board so yeah there's been a lot of central defenders you know, that we have been interested in obviously we do know we're looking uh, to get um, a right back in obviously we do need a right back in or someone to replace Antonio Valencia we need an upgrade uh, to Ashley Young and we need a cover up uh, for Diego Dalla and Alan Wampasaka for me would be 
be the right player. I think he's regarded now as the best right back in the Premier League. Um, obviously, um, he's got three years uh, left term on his contract with Crystal Palace. He did initially say the, uh, in the press, Crystal Palace want around sixty million pounds for him. Um, but I'd love our Um He's, he's um, obviously you know spent the entirety of his career with Crystal Palace so far. Only broke into the first team with Crystal Palace um, in February um, of two thousand and eighteen. So he has been in the first team with them uh, for about fifteen months now or something like that. But he is predominantly um, a right back. Initially, was a winner uh, when he was a lot younger, but obviously then uh, got rotated um, as a right back and he's done um, absolutely fantastic. Um, as Alan Wambasaka, only twenty one years of age, has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. But yeah, I do uh, really, really um, like him. Of course, and he's been on Manchester United's agenda for quite some time now. Um, it did initially say a while back that he's committed to Crystal Palace and Wambasaka. He's intending on spending um, at least um, another season uh, with Crystal Palace. But yeah, there has been um, a lot of talks um, about him going on. So we definitely uh, need um, a right back. Um, obviously. Um, if De Gea leaves um, the club, obviously we're going to need a replacement for De Gea. And um, obviously, you know, we've been in negotiations trying to get David De Gea a new contract. Reportedly, he's demanded that he wants around, you know, £400,000 a week if he's committed his long-term future to the club, if he's to sign a new contract. Uh, but um, as I said, um, PSG, I think, are intending on getting him on a free transfer next year. But it would be a calamity, you know, if we let David De Gea go um, on a free transfer. Because if we can't come to an agreement to get him a new contract, obviously, you know, we'd want to uh, cash in for De Gea uh, this summer. Obviously, you know, we'd want to uh, cash in uh, for De Gea uh, this summer, you know, rather than go on a free transfer next year. But, you know, I think we could maybe get around 60 or 70 million pounds for him. Um, I think his uh, full value is worth around 100 million pounds, um, is David De Gea, because potentially um, he's the best uh, goalkeeper um, in the world. Uh, but say if he had maybe three or four years left on his contract, then probably would we would probably get 100 million pounds uh, for David uh, De Gea. But um, as I did say, PSG, you know, are intending on getting him on a free transfer because obviously this means they wouldn't have to pay any fee. And then obviously, you know, they could offer him a, a big amount um, of wit, a bigger. Um, amount um, of wages um, of course so if De Gea leaves he's going to be definitely going to PSG I don't see him going to uh, Real Madrid um, even though Real Madrid um, have been long admirers of him you know Real Madrid were on the brink of getting him back in 2015 but due to a fax machine uh, of course the deal uh, never uh, materialised uh, um, of course but yeah David De Gea has been a great servant for us he's been here 8 seasons he's made over 300 appearances um, in all competitions he's won everything um, here uh, domestically um, as De Gea but um, obviously he hasn't done much on in this 8 year period ok made quite a few cost of mistakes towards the back end of the season but I think it's something to do with the contract to a situation of course and as I said this has been a problem with Manchester United you know, we've let far too many uh, players their uh, contracts uh, run down so I probably think you know De Gea um, is probably you not know, going to be uh, leaving the club um, from my own um, opinion because we're not willing to meet his £400,000 a week uh, wage demands and in his current deal at the moment he's on £200,000 a week so he wants a £200,000 pay rise but he's only got a year left um, on his deal um, as David De Gea so we've got to cash in for him this summer if we can't come to scream to get me new contracts rather than letting go on a free transfer and that would be um, a calamity um, indeed so yeah, we're going to need a replacement for De Gea, you know, if he currently um, goes. And that's mainly, you know, everything's up there, you know, but the main part of this video, you know, I want to give you an update on um, in regards to uh, Daniel James. Reportedly, Manchester United um, have agreed a £15 million deal with Swansea for him. Um, I think it says the terms um, have been agreed. As I said, Solskjaer, when he got asked about, you know, you know, the speculation of linking Daniel James with move to Old Trafford, he refused to comment on that because obviously he knows that so many individuals are linked uh, with the move uh, to Old Trafford. Uh, but yeah, it's looking likely um, he's going to be uh, coming in. He's going to be um, our first sign, um, is Daniel James. James and I hope he can blend in well at Manchester United I hope he can exceed um, expectations and I hope he can you know be very very consistent for us because to be fair to him he's a, to be fair He's done it with, with Swansea this season. Um, he is a championship player, as we all know. So this is going to take his career to the next level, coming to a club like Manchester United and coming to experience uh, the Premier League, um, of course. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update today. Uh, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. Um, if you do, consider subscribing um, as always. And take care, God bless, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.